can I just ask everyone to move in the middle? And when you move in the middle, you will notice there are seven seats in each row. So if you believe that Quran has been preserved dot by dot, letter by letter, make sure you sit on the left hand side. If you believe that didn't happen, make sure you sit on the right hand side. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, just sit wherever you are. My <laughs> never sit in the middle. Never sit in the middle. You can't you can't have half your seat in other half out. You wanna make full commitment or not commit at all? So you made not commitment, that's fine. I can't remember what my, my options, but my statement was sit on the left or right, depend what you s where is your stand on the perfect preservation of the Quran. I think I said sit on the right if you believe it's perfectly preserved. <laughs> you don't need to make that complicated. It's the other right, okay? It's the other right. <laughs> okay, let's... <laughs> Let's focus. It's always my right and my left, because I don't see you. <laughs> Why? So what's wrong with that? <laughs> Gabriel, do you believe Quran has been perfectly preserved dot by dot, letter by letter? No? Therefore you said that? That that took like one minute, <laughs> forty eight seconds. Like seriously, okay. On a serious note, uh, Quran is identified as the eternal word of Allah. David would express as the eternal speech of Allah, become a book, and lives among us. And there are individuals who are trying to destroy it, or there are individuals who destroyed it. Okay. Quran reveals the will of Allah to humanity. It's the last revelation. Last time Allah is going to reveal everything human needs to know, what does he reveal? A book. Look from the biblical perspective. What does Lord Jesus Christ stand for? He's the word of God and... He's the son of God and, and the savior of the world. Why he's the savior of the world? Okay. Or I am in need of savior. I don't need any other book. I don't need any other structure or any other teacher. I need a savior, therefore eternal word of God comes and dwells among us as a savior. So when we talk about Quran, we kind of ideally want to compare Quran to Jesus. Eternal speech of Allah, eternal word of Allah, eternal word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. They kind of do the similar things. Okay, similar things, not the same things, but similar things. On the day of judgment, Quran is going to appeal as a pale man, an intimacy for those who recited it and argue with Allah. What does Lord Jesus Christ do? He intercedes for us, even today. Okay, the mess you just ma made it, he is interceding for you. Of course, in that occasion, it's not the one, I am not the one who made the mess. It's you, of course. So, Quran and Jesus, similar. They've got similar responsibilities for their followers. And then, you come to 7th century, and then you meet with a man called Muhammad, which we kind of mentioned a little bit about him yesterday. He comes with a book, okay? When I say he comes a with a book, kind of, People come to him and then ask questions, and then he says, this is what Allah revealed to me. And then people kind of take that and memorize it. 
he claims to have the revelation from Allah, which comes through Gabriel in certain occasions, even a tree passes the revelation down. Okay? It's not an apple tree, it's another tree. Passes revelation down and then people memorize it. When Muhammad dies, they don't have the Quran as a compiled book form. Okay? Around, I'm quickly summarizing, around 650s, man called Uthman decides, not decides, he's gently forced to decide to compile the Quran. And when you meet with Muslims, you are going to hear from Muslims that today the Quran we are reading is exactly what Muhammad received, which was passed to Uthman. That's what we are reading is. Dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, word by word, it's exactly the same. Anyone heard something else? Okay, Th someone heard something else. I'm guessing she took Yasir Kadir's class, which was so expensive. <laughs> um, what did you hear, sister? Yes. Okay, Trans transmitteration, so it's not a translation. So the current Quran we are reading comes to us, not current Quran we are reading, approximately 90% of the Muslim world reading the Hafs Quran. So it has nothing to do with Uthman or with Muhammad. So I'm guessing you took that Yasir Kadi's class too. Okay, <laughs> that was free, that's a good one. Um, anyone has any problem with that statement? So far hearing that there are individuals out there making a claim that Quran has been perfectly preserved dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, word by word. It's deception? Okay, so you've got little bit story that you are talking about Uthman burned the Qurans, therefore, they might be different, they might have different Qurans in 7th century. Therefore, that makes you curious how come people come to conclusion that the Quran we are reading is what Muhammad received. Correct? Do we have any problem if someone makes a claim that they've got dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, exactly the same book since 7th century? Will you have any problem? You should get suspect. It was written in fragments, yeah? But they didn't have dots in those days. Okay, that's very basic. So they didn't have dots. And then if someone says, all the Qurans you are reading around the world is exactly the same, you're just like, okay, who controlled it? That's what you need to be asking. So who was in charge of Hold that 14th century didn't allow anyone else to add anything in it. So, Muhammad had someone called Umar as the father-in-law. Father anyone heard of him? He's also known in Muslim circles as bl Bloody Umar. He's like very violent guy, like really, really very violent guy. He is in a mosque, and there is an individual who is praying Surah 25, reciting Surah 25. Umar, Umar is the father-in-law of Muhammad at that stage. What is father-in-law? His wife's father. Hafsa's father. So, what kind of things you discuss with your father-in-law? You discuss the things about your wife. And if you are the prophet, you would discuss what Allah is passing you, correct? You would talk about, re you would have religious discussions. Muhammad doesn't tell him anything about what he's receiving at that stage. So Umar and Hisham is in the mosque. And Hisham is reciting Surah 25. And it's different than what Umar knew before. Individual wants to go and then grab the reciter from his neck and then take it to Muhammad because the Quran which is being recited is different. 
Both of them go to Muhammad. Uh, I'm sorry. Umar is kind and patient. He waits a little bit until the surah finishes. Both of them goes to Muhammad. Those people are from the same tribe, and both of them are men. Okay, that's important. And they are adult. They go to Muhammad, and then, okay, Muhammad, we've got situation here. This person is reciting, this surah is different than how I learned. Muhammad steps in and then says, recite it. Other they both recite, and Muhammad says, both of the ways are okay. That's how it is revealed to me. But by that stage, no one knew Quran is coming different ways. Even the father-in-law of Muhammad. And that guy, like, had three verses contribute to the Quran. But he didn't know Quran was coming to Muhammad in seven different ways. Term is used as ahruf. And according to Sheikh Yasir Qadir, page 175 in Science of the Quran, no one knows what ahruf is. Okay? So, Quran reveals in seven different ahrufs, and that's the first time people are hearing both of the ways are okay. But it was so different, I wanted to grab you from your neck. And my father, my son-in-law didn't tell me it was okay, Quran is coming in this way. And then you've got this guy called Ubay bin Kaab. Anyone heard of him? He's a good guy. He's a good guy. So if, if people are hating someone, those people are good guy, okay? <laughs> that's, that's very basic principle, okay? <laughs> that's not true. So Ubay bin Kaab is one of the person Muhammad says, take the Quran from. Take the Quran, learn the Quran from this guy. Ubay bin Kaab is in a mosque, and then someone else is reciting a surah. And that's different than what Ubay bin Kaab learned. Both of them goes to Muhammad again. At that stage, like, Umar is not saying, oh, Quran is coming in different seven different ways. No one is talking about these seven different ways at all. Both of them go to Muhammad, and then Muhammad says, that's okay, Quran is revealed in seven different ways. We don't know what are those ways. Okay, but it is revealed in seven different ways. Ubay bin Kaab expresses that he never had doubt about this kind of things, even in the time before Islam. Muhammad notices Ubay bin Kaab gets suspicion, and then he strikes him in the chest. So his doubt, like, he, it, it talked about like he sweated. His doubt goes away. So you get beaten by the prophet, because, serious though, <laughs> you got beaten by the prophet because you just like, okay, I am the one, people are looking up to learn the Quran from me, but I don't even know Quran is coming to me in different ways. Actually, Quran is coming to the prophet in different ways. I don't even know that. And now I am finding that out, and I am suspect, I, I'm suspicious by this. And then he gets beaten, and then he's on the right track now. Um, those kind of things happen, and then people are talking about, I, Muhammad kind of praises someone because he doesn't remember the verses, all those kind of things, and then we kind of come around 632, and Muhammad is dead. Muhammad is dead, they don't have a Quran. People go to battle, uh, um, because Muhammad didn't tell people, like, what was the criteria for people to be Muslim. People kind of say, okay, I'm not going to pay the zakat, and then fight started. People claim to be another prophet. Fight started, and Abu Bakr spent, Muhammad's father-in-law, spent all of his two years of caliph just to get rid of those people, apostates. And they go to this battle. Seventy people who memorize the Quran dies. And now they are having problem because they are going to lose the Quran. 70 people who memorize the Quran is dead. Islamic world is shaking, battle of Yamama. Okay, Islamic world is shaking because 70 people are dead who memorize the Quran. Not thousands of people, but 70 people. They decided to compile the Quran. No one wants to do it because it's Buddha. Anyway, Allah steps in and then kind of makes them feel they need to do it. They do it. I'll give you all the references you need for those read the full stories. I'm just summarizing in a way I would talk to Muslim for, so for them to explain it to me. 
Quran is compiled, given to Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is dead, given to Umar, and then Umar is dead. Hafsa has the Quran, wife of Muhammad. Okay, not Aisha, but Hafsa has the Quran. Around 650s, still fight is going on because Islam is the religion of pieces, so they usually fight with one another. This time they are in Azerbaijan area. Muslims fighting against enemies. Muslims within themselves calling one another disbeliever. We are all Muslims. I'm calling this man disbeliever because the way he recites the Quran. And that's only 20 years after death of Muhammad. That means if I'm calling him disbeliever because the way he recites the Quran, recitation is failed. Even though they had the book, Still they are reciting and their recitation is no good. And what do you do to kafirs? You don't have hot chocolate with them. So you kill them. And chief, what do you call that person? Chief arm of the, the guy who can, commander, something in that line, okay? The guy who goes to war and then leads the people to war comes to Muhammad and then says, sorry, comes to Uthman and then says, we need to compile the Quran before nation divides, like the Christians and Jews. Remind me why this, why it all started? Because the Muslims were calling one another disbelievers. That is now making Muslim leaders to think we are going to be like Jews and Christians. They've got different books. What is the difference between Jewish and Christian books? Old Testament and New Testament. So, the way Quran is being recited is very different. That means, when this gentleman is reciting the Quran, I never heard that verse. Or I'm just like, that's not part of the Quran. And same thing. So it's not like kind of small things. Big, it was a big deal. And then they go, Uthman says, okay, I'm a very kind person, I'm going to do this, blah, blah, and then they do it. Relatives of Uthman come together, and then they are going to put the Quran together. And at that stage, you've got someone called Zayed bin Talib. Zayed bin Talib, Zayed bin Talib who was involved with the previous Quran, gets the half size Quran, and then they decided to put it together. At that stage, there are Certain verses ends up in the Quran, only one person's testimony. One person says, that's the verse. And then they put it there. And then he need to go and search for the verses. They don't even know who has the verses, okay? I need to go and hunt it, find Mr. X knows, put it down. And when that happens, what happens? So now I've got perfect one Quran. What do I do? I still don't have the dots. <laughs> this is only 20 years after death of Muhammad. So I've got one perfect book now. I compiled this. What I'm going to do? Anything, anything disagrees with this or there are anything else, I'm going to get rid of them. Okay? I order every Quranic copies to be burned. Sadly, they promised Hafsa that they will return her book. They waited until Hafsa is deaf to burn her copy. Okay? So all the copies are being burned at this, that stage. And now people are saying, well, there were verses revealed, we practiced it, and we can't find them in the Quran. Where are they? I am afraid people are going to go astray. Where are those verses? And today, still those verses are not in the Quran. What happened to those verses? Mr. Muslim? The God came and eat those verses. Okay, and those verses are not in the Quran. Or certain surah is revealed as long as surah 9, surah 33, revealed as long as surah 9, but it's not in the Quran. So 129 verses versus 73 verses. It's kind of messed up. Uh, but everything is fine, everything is fine because I, I got rid of my evidence. I burned everything else. From now on, this is what we are going to do. Okay, that's around 656. Around 705, there is this gentleman steps into history, um, Hajjaj. 
uh, he's got like problem with the Quran out, out there. Anyone knows what Al Hajjaj does? He beats people up. Okay? He puts oil on the Qurans and then burns the Quran. He edited verses into the Quran, and that's not enough. He pays people 60 dirham for them to give their copy so that their copy can be tear up. Who does this? Who is this person? A Muslim leader. Not a kafir who comes out of the street, or not Islamophobe, but a Muslim leader. And he talks about like very badly about the companions of Muhammad. Around 900, okay, people are trying to still have one Quran. Around 900, individuals are talking, they are seeing 50 different Arabic Qurans in their possessions, okay? There is library, you can go and then even those um, Qurans are being named in the book. Ubay bin Kaab, who got beaten by Muhammad, has a Quran which has 116 chapters. How many chapters in our Quran today? In Muslim's Quran, it's not my Quran. 114 chapters. So somehow he's got two extra chapters. Ibn Masud, they broke his hip because he didn't want people to follow the Quran of Muha uh, Uthman. It was like, it's like religion of pieces, okay? He had 111 chapters in his Quran. And today I have 114 chapters in the Quran I am reading. 900, those Qurans around and circulating. People are saying like, I saw Ibn Masud's Quran. And 936 something, Islamic world very much messed up. They are gonna officialize, canonize certain Qurans, okay? Someone steps in and then says, from now on, Ibn Mujahid, we are going to have seven Qurans. Okay? Can anyone help me out? How, how do you think this man made that decision to come up with seven Qurans? So, because Muhammad said Quran revealed in seven different ahruf. Is this gentleman Muhammad? No, okay. Is he prophet? No. No, okay. Anything else? Power. He has power. How did he get that power? <laughs> well, sometimes things are just given to you with the roses, okay? In, the, in one of those occasions. He has the power, political power. He picks the seven Qurans. From now, it's been officialized and at seven Quran. He is the student of Al-Tabari. And Tabari disagrees with um, certain choices he made, but anyway, it happens. Uh, and then we come around 15th century, okay? In 900s, we've got now seven different Qurans. In 15, not 15, um, is it 15th century? 1429, 1400s. Uh, we've got another gentleman steps in and then decides, okay, I'm going to come up with ten reading. He picked seven readings, it, making everyone confused because Quran is revealed in seven ahruf. That's confusing. I'm going to go with ten. And then he picks his Qurans. It's all however you pick it, okay? Like, they, there is a saying in Turkish, like, I don't know if I can rephrase it, but if you've got friends in high places, you can get lots of things done. So, People who was friends with those individuals who are picking and choosing Qurans, they was able to get their Qurans down. And around 700s, okay, so not 700, 1700s, someone else comes and then says, we are gonna do make this 14 different Arabic Qurans. So he picks 14 Qurans. At the time of Muhammad, there are different Arabic Qurans. Uthman steps in and then gets rid of it, makes one. 900 out of 50 different Arabic Qurans, seven is being chosen. 1400, 10 is chosen. And then 1700, 14 is chosen. Okay? And then you come to 19, 1900. 1920, 
23-24. At this stage, just little geography lessons. Ottomans, Turkish Empire, current Turkish Empire. Ottomans were like so, so awesome. So they would go to the different lands and then share life with those people after like whatever left from that land. So they are sharing life with those people. So that's like to Egypt, to Algeria, even to Morocco, as well as like other half of the world, okay? Yes, sharing life was very good. Um, wherever you they go, they go with their Quran, okay? So that means majority of the world is simply reading uh, one Quran out of these 14 Qurans. Uh, that was Hafs Quran. In 1920, 23-24, Muslims are going to pick the Quran, which they, they want kind of classroom to follow. They go with Hafs Quran because people more aware of that Quran. And then 1930s, that was just for Al-Azhar Uni, 1930s, they decide, okay, this Quran is going to be like for Egypt. As that happens, something important they do. Anyone knows about the geography in Egypt? Yeah, so they kind of, okay, there are certain Qurans. What do we do is? So we burn Qurans, we burn more Qurans, we tear them up, and then we sing them. Okay? So they, they put those Qurans, sing them. And then around 1980s, Saudi Arabia decides we want to make one Quran official for the whole world, and that's going to be half Quran. Everything is so good. So. The Quran we are reading is one and become one and only because Saudi decided this is what's going to happen. Of course, like the world is like so bad politics, okay? S Algeria says, no, I want to follow the Warsh Quran. And then Saudi puts fatwa out there in the mosques in Saudi, you cannot read the Hafs Quran, sorry, Warsh Quran, it's been banned. Algeria steps in and then says, you cannot use half Quran here. So they put their fatwa up. Along the way, miracle happens because all those information I'm sharing with you comes to from Islamic sources. And then today you can just turn up the bookshops in Muslim majority countries and then buy those different Qurans. So it's not like people are hiding these informations. Something happens um, late 18, uh, 1980s, onwards, people start saying that Quran has been perfectly preserved dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, word by word. Why? Because without lies, Islam dies. We were reminded that yesterday. Um, so that claim stepped into the history like only a few decades ago. Before that, everyone knew there were different Arabic Qurans and they would talk about it. There are books I had in my library, shows how Muslim scholars tells you here's the difference between those Arabic Qurans. And then when kind of Islamic sources are being translated to diff um, Western languages, in English, uh, that kind of claim is dead. Okay, that no one knows there were different Qurans before now. Uh, since we've got now one perfect Quran, and then you went to Algeria, and then that one perfect Quran, your one perfect Quran was half Quran, in Algeria you just got prison. Because you have different Quran, what the government is asking you to read it. That's a problem. Okay? So, so far, I do hope that you picked up Recitation, when anyone claims that the Qurans have different recitation and then it passed to us by many, many, many and more many people and those people are reliable, I'm guessing your answer is you are lying. So that's polite way. <laughs> that's not true, it's polite way of saying that. <laughs> Why? Because only few people who memorized the Quran, they died and then Islamic world is shaking. At the time of Muhammad, tradition tells us there were different Arabic Qurans. And the recitation failed within 30 years, 20, 30 years. Therefore, they compiled the Quran again. And if it is just the recitation today, those different Arabic Qurans are just the recitation, Saudi Arabia wouldn't ban a Quran. Algeria wouldn't ban the Quran. Okay? 
so they wouldn't bend the Quran. Something happens, uh, so that means they are not exactly the same. Quran goes to the tummy of the ship. Quran goes to the burn. Quran burns again, tears up. 60 dirham, like that's not a lot of money either. Um, and then sink in the river. Today, you can simply compile minimum of 37 different Arabic Qurans. Actually, you don't even need to do that. Why? Because within the last two years, Muslim scholars expressed, yes, we are very much aware that there are different Arabic Qurans, but for you to know that, you need to take my class, so you will learn about it. As well as Muslim missionaries published a book, okay, called Bridges Translation of the Ten Krat. That's like Arabic in one side, English is next to it. Footnotes tells you how many different Quran, how, uh, that word cha um, changed the meaning in how many different Qurans. So you don't need to like go and buy those books, uh, Arabic books. You can simply get those PDF version of that Muslim missionaries book. He's making a case we are very much aware of it. It's only like changes in few places. He puts only 30% of those changes and then says it's all together like his, I think his number was like over 1,000, but that's only 30% of it. So when you put, to and that's in within 30 Qurans. When you look at different Arabic Qurans, uh, you can easily come up with 93,000 variations from Quran A to Quran B, okay? That's a lot of variations for not even a dot changed claim. I'll give you a couple of examples. Anyone, um, if anyone wants those lists, I can give you the list of the um, important variations. Can, um, in English, is there a difference between creature uh, or innocent? Okay, Surah 98 verse six. Is there a difference between fight and kill? Yeah. What is the difference between them? It's like the difference between death and alive. Oh. Yep. Were you trying to say something? No, sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> is, is there a difference between Pharaoh and Moses? Is there a difference between I and you? Yes. yes. Is there a difference, surely there is a reward versus is there a reward? Yes. yes. One is question, other one is statement. Will not, make it no, will, will not make it known to you versus will make it known to you. Okay. Move the mountains, not move the mountains. Those are just few examples. Okay, and tho those are not big examples. Cert there are certain examples affects the life of Muslims, how they do their prayer. For example, before they go to prayer, they need to wash their feet or do they need to wipe their feet? It depends on the Quran you are reading. When you touch a woman in a sexual sense, you need to wash all of your body, gusul, okay? You need to have like full shower. Um, if you handshake with a woman, you just need to wash your hands, feet, all that, like you need to do wudu. You don't need to have a shower. If you are following one Quran, it tells you when you sexually touch the woman, other Quran tells you when you do handshake with a woman. So what do you need to do? Because practice of Islam is different, depend which Quran you read. When you cannot fast, you need to feed people, okay? Is it feeding one person or feeding more than three people, two, uh, two or more? So depend, it affects your daily life, okay? So therefore, like, kill or fight is not that big deal. But certain things are big deal because it affects their worship. And sadly, Allah gets cross with people when they fail to do their prayer exactly the way they need to do it. So therefore it is important. But for us overall it is important because imams, sheikhs, mothers of Muslims, fathers of Muslims, they lie to their kids or the sheikhs and imams lie to those Muslims and then told them that there is only one Quran perfectly preserved dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, word by word. 
they've been lied by people whom they learn to look up to, whom, like biologically programmed to shepherd them. Most of those Muslims, of course, don't know those kind of lies. And we concern, we concern for that. Why? Because every, every action has reaction. S consequences, people have consequences. And consequences, when it comes to the perfect preservation of the Quran is, if you are reciting the wrong Quran, you are not going to get that pale man to intercede for you. And that's serious. But overall, I think it's helpful to remember uh, no one needs a pale man to intercede for them. No one needs a book to tell them what they need to do. There is a brokenness in this broken world. We've got problem in our hearts. And that problem is like circulating around like a cancer. Solution to that is the savior. We don't need any other book. We don't need dot by dot preserved something. We need perfect savior. And that's Lord Jesus Christ. So using those kind of points, and especially like Sheikh Yasir, um, Sheikh, um, Yasir Qadi's point on um, statements on there are holes in the narrative, should draw our attention to Lord Jesus Christ. And that help, should help us to draw people's attention to Lord Jesus Christ. Because we want people to point themselves Look up to one who has holes in his hand and holes in his feet. Because that's the perfect, sufficient savior and perfect intercessor for Muslims. Okay? Um, my time is up. Thank you very much for listening to me. If anyone, anyone had any question, I don't think I have time for that. But I can see next room is still going on. So um, it would be very rude of us if we just like, cross that road. Room. So if anyone has any question, I can answer that question, I guess. So question question is if if Muslims are making a claim that Quran has been perfectly preserved, how do they respond to the um, question of like which Quran has been perfectly preserved. Allah knows best. Um, Allah who doesn't even know who are the believers knows best but in this occasion uh, because majority of Muslim world knows about Hafs Quran, they will say Quran in my house, Quran in my hand or they will point you to app which says like this Quran until they even see the differences they are going to deny which one is being preserved. For them there is only one Quran Oh, it's just a recitation. It's just the dots. They claim is like just changing as the time goes on. Um, and when you put those differences, the question you are asking is, what did Allah reveal? How does Allah want you to practice your wudu, your prayer? Allah cannot say, fight and kill in one breath. Because they are opposed to the one another. Allah cannot say, positive and negative thing in one breath for the same sentence. You cannot tell me your creator, God of universe, didn't know difference between Moses or Pharaoh. That's just like, even I know differences between that. You just need to like, what is in that eternal tablet Allah revealed? Question is better. Um, they start recognize so um, do they so basically they kind of um, fall into the lines of the Quran they have in their possession is the one which has been perfectly preserved. Um, what was your second point? You don't remember it. Uh, are they aware of the different Arabic Qurans? Uh, they are becoming aware of different Arabic Qurans, even though individuals are kind of taking um, their interview off online. Muslims are very much aware of their um, different Arabic Qurans. I know like approximately like 100 people left Islam and turned to Lord Jesus Christ because they have seen with their own eyes there are two different Arabic Qurans. So I've got 37. Uh, we brought 26 to speakers going a couple of years back. Did you have a question?
different, so question is how do, when Muslims see the different Arabic Qurans, how do they react to that? I think we need to finish because people are going to go for lunch. Um, so it's different for everyone. Like there is no like one reaction from everyone. Like everyone is unique. The way people react to things are very different. First, when someone puts it in your, in your hand and then says, oh, see, they are different, what are you going to do? You are going to play denial game. You are going to play denial game. You are going to play denial game until it starts bothering you. That's very, very normal. I know individuals who walked away from Islam because they just like, oh, I'm being lied. But I know individuals, I know individuals who saw it and then who, sa who said, like we, when we were in Dearborn, gentleman said, well, I will ask Allah on the day of judgment why he didn't make clear. So for him, even though like people are becoming a Muslim because they heard Quran has been perfectly preserved, they still want to live in that lie. Bible talks about people likes to living in darkness. So it's comfortable. It's comfortable to kind of just follow up where you were, just ignore the facts. So there are people who walk away from Islam. Um, there are people who walk away from Islam and turn to Lord Jesus Christ, as well as there are people who kind of, I am blind, I can't see. This is all the same thing to me. Okay? Thank you very much for your attention, and lunch is ready, I think.